because they want to hear what's going on. They want to know why the show is so popular despite every obstacle thrown in, thrown at the man. How does he keep going? What keeps him going? Who is he? Uh, what motivates him? What makes Sammy run? And boy, oh boy, even though I don't like him politically, I sure like him personally. Or actually, I'm starting to think I like him politically because I never heard anybody express things that way or something along the lines of I've been brainwashed all my life until Savage came along or something along the lines of God, I had no idea it was that bad until you actually showed me the truth. Something along those lines. And so therefore, I would like to talk about pornography versus art for a moment. Now, the reason I want to do this is because I grew up on several magazines. When I was young, I loved Boy's Life. I loved Flying Magazine, things like that when I was a kid, dreamer. I probably also snuck a peek at my father's Argosy magazine. There was a men's magazine. There's such a thing called men's magazine, Argosy. I mean, I was probably looking for a naked girl in there, but it was always about, I don't know, hunting or something, guys in checked shirts. I have no idea what it was. But it said Argosy and men read it who smoked Chesterfields. Or something like that, you know, without filters. I read it. I didn't get much out of it. But then when I became a teenager, I chose my own magazines. Uh, I liked Road and Track and Playboy. In fact, I grew up on Road and Track and Playboy. Now, the reason I mention these magazines is because people confuse pornography. They don't understand what pornography is and what it is not. Playboy was not truly pornographic in those days because it idealized the female form. But you have to remember that societies have idealized the human form from time immemorial. All you have to do is look at the ancient Greek statues uh, and the statues that they idealized, both male and female. Or look at Michelangelo's David. Were these pornographic images? Of course not. Such statues would only be pornographic to throwbacks or fascists. They're not pornographic. And the reason... The Greek statues were not pornographic, or Michelangelo's David was not pornographic, is because although the human form was shown in, in the nude form, they idealized the human form. They did not trivialize the human form, or debase the human form, or mock the human form, or defile the human form. Now enters the next phase. All of that changed when Larry Flint, the sickest mind of his generation, in my opinion, introduced Hustler magazine. I remember when it came along, I took one look at one issue and threw it away and never looked at it again. Why? Because it was gynecological. It was debasing. It was the humiliation and debasement of women. It was not the glorification and idealization of the female form. And my friends at the Savage Nation, that is the difference between pornography and art. I'm Michael Savage, and I agree with the monologue, which I wrote. Now play some rock and roll, and I'll take some calls on... Dream. I guess you go to the correspondence dinner in a Jaguar with uh, Larry, Larry Flint's old girlfriend. <laughs> Whoever she might be. Did he ever have one? Half the 90 years old. Still hobbling along on Viagra. Worked for him. I guess he doesn't believe in the next world. He had enough fun in this world. What does he need the next world for? What if you live your whole life for the next world and there isn't one? And that's a real horrible thought. Like it did everything, didn't do this. No, can't do it because this is only one short step in eternity. And eternity is a very long period of time and I'll be rewarded in the next world. And boom, there is no next world. But you see, here's the thing. So if there is no next world, you don't lose anything in a way because you won't know that you denied yourself. You, you see, this is the interesting thing. It's better to do the right thing because... This is what you've got to figure out. Even from a cynical point of view, it's better to believe in the, in, the, in the hereafter. I'll tell you why. You can come to God from a cynical point of view as well, if only you listen to me. Let's say you're a, a devout uh, atheist. There is no God. Ha, ha, ha. Only throwback schmucks believe in God. I'm smart. I live in San Francisco. That's what they, you know, they think they know everything. Okay, so they don't believe in God. They're godless. Eyeless in Gaza or eyeless in San Francisco. It doesn't really matter. They're still eyeless and godless. So they say, we don't believe in it. That's only for rubes, backwards people, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So they say, okay, I'm going to do whatever I want. I'm going to act it out here. I really don't care. I'm never going to be punished unless I'm caught by the police. So they die and there is no next world. So they don't get punished or rewarded. Or they die and there is a next world. And they go before God. And he says, well, you gambled and you lost. 
So here's what's going to happen. You're going to come back as a bug. You're going to come back as a fly. You're going to come back as uh, Obama. You're going to come back as uh, Larry Flynn. You're going to come back as a, a tuna fish in a can. I, whatever you're going to come back as, if you believe in that. So you get punished. So if you do the right thing and you go before God and there is a God, so you get rewarded. If you do the right thing and there is no next world, and you, you don't lose anything. So therefore, you may as well do the right thing, boys and girls in the savage nation. So whichever way you look at it, you may as well do the right thing the best you can. That's how I see it. Whether you do it from a higher level, you know, from a higher motivation or lower motivation, it doesn't really matter. But, you know, when you break it right down, what it comes down to is that decent people want to do decent things either way. It doesn't matter about the next world or this world. Because don't let me, uh, don't don't confuse yourself for one minute. I met a lot of religious people. They wore the garb and they did the, the holy rolling and the, you know, the mumbo jumbo. And they were the meanest, thievingest SOBs I've ever met in my life. And frankly, I've met some uh, atheists who weren't such bad people. So it depends upon the person at the end of the day. Now let's go on to some people in the news. Uh, 1-800-449-8255, michaelsavage.com. Again, I'd like to welcome all of you from across America. 